Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way, and today this is the second part of what will be a bar table. Um, by the time we get to, or by the time you see this, you would have seen me live turn this into the center spindle. So we're doing things around, sort of slightly around the, the wrong way today, but that by the time you've seen me today, you would have seen this being turned. We need to keep this piece um, sort of with me because we're gonna size a few things on the table top and bottom with it. Um, so yeah, the, the object of today's um, uh, stream really is to show you how to make the base, so the main uh, stand for the piece, and then the top itself. We're gonna start off, of course, by making the top, um, just the way I'm working, because I'm gonna be using a few of those um, um, scrap bits from the top to, to make the base as well. Um, there is a blog to support this video and in the blog we're making the whole table from recycled materials. We've got old garden um, fence posts, which this is one as well, and pallets. So in the blog you'll see a recycled version of what we're doing here. And we're going to start off with my recycled um, fence posts, but we've got good um, stock for the top and the bottom. In this case it's tulip, so the poplar um, uh, timber. Um, so yeah, let's get started then. Okay, so just to make life easier for ourselves, I've cut this uh, cardboard template out from an old uh, card box. Um, the diameter of the top, I'm using 550, so 550 millimeters, um, 55 centimeters. Um, it's just a measurement that I've sort of worked out to be a good size. Um, and the bottom is just gonna be fractionally uh, bigger than this, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. So 55 centimeters is my top dimension. We're going to give you all the measurements as we go, um, then you can um, slightly you know, change it to what you want, but 55 is where we're going to start. So I'm going to mark, this is my center board, this one here, slightly wider than these two. Now what I would say, I've um, so I've surface planed and thicknessed all of the boards here. You don't have to do that. You can keep them rough. And in the blog version, I've exactly done that. I've kept it rough and just done the light sanding. What I've done on this piece is the center board, I've just um, planed each um, edge as well and a single edge on the sideboard. So I'm not worried about out here because we're going to cut that later on. So let's just measure roughly where I need to cut these boards. So I need that one times two, so one there, one there. We'll measure, or we'll cut this off, then we'll measure that one in a minute. But I can then use this for maybe my cross braces or, or something like that. So let's go to the uh, chop saw, cut these off. Okay, so we're going to cut this off uh, to length. What you can't see, I've got my eye protection on, but I've also got uh, hearing protection on. This is a, uh, obviously it's a different machine. It's a little bit louder than everything else that we've got to use today. So um, hearing protection is on. And I'm gonna cut to my pencil line. So this is the center board. So our center board. Now onto the two side boards. So I've got my cut line here already. So we'll just roughly mark where that one needs to be. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do now, we're just going to go back to the, the bench. Okay, so I'm going to cut the center or supports for the table top now. So these are gonna be 100 mil or four inches wide. Um, just doing it from a piece of the, the scrap. So nice and simple. I'm gonna use a push stick when I get close. So that's going to be our thickness, so that's 100 mil. So if we cut that to length now, we also need to create another piece which is going to sandwich our upright, our column, um, in position. Okay, so we've got our paper template on our boards that are cut. Um, we're going to mark that out in a second. 
the panels that we've just cut are braces to go across the bottom so we can we can actually cut those to size in a minute drill them and then start thinking about assembly um i had thought of dry fitting this but i think we're just going to glue in place and, and fit together um, we know the dimensions and everything now i just want to get this across this is no high-end uh, furniture making project this is uh, a, a rough outdoor table i hesitantly planed everything because i quite like um, if I'm honest, I quite like the, the rough sawn uh, finish, hence the palettes. But we have playing this just to make it easier for you guys to see. Um, and of course, you can make it as, as, as accurate and as, um, you know, as, as tight as you want to. I'm quite keen on the, the rustic look, um, and the, which, is, which matches my style of joinery, if I'm honest with you. Um, so let's draw out our dimensions here. So... Um, I'm just going to cut this on the band so there's going to be no turning involved in this section of the project at all. We will turn the centre spindle, but again, the centre spindle, if you wanted to, can just be square. You don't have to do any turning. So you don't own a lathe, then don't worry about it. Um, it's all good. It's all good. It's all what you want to, at the end of the day. Uh, there we are. So that's our circle. Turn. You probably can't see that at the moment. Um, in terms of, I'm going to just going to position these. Now we've got, we will have four pieces of timber um, on here. Um, two long slats. Okay, let's position that. So where's my centre? There's my centre. Make a couple of measurements. I've actually marked, if I'm honest with you, I've actually marked so this one can be cut in half. So, 80 to 41. Yeah, we're just going to cut that one in half. One's going to go there, one's going to go here, because this is the same dimension in terms of width as the centre column. So we want to sandwich that centre column in. Um, and we'll, in fact, we'll use that centre column in a minute just to, just to position everything nicely. So if I cut this one in half, we'll then get the drilling and the countersinking done and fix everything together. Okay, so I've got two, the, the two support um, straps here. And I've also got two infill. We're, we're going to explain what these exactly are for in a minute when we get back to the bench. But I need to drill everything. So two holes in these. And we're going to put um, five holes in these. One in the centre, two on each side. I'm not worried about where they go. If you are worried about it, then measure and put stops up and all those sorts of things. So we're just drilling first before we countersink. This is to glue and screw onto the top. Keep everything nicely strapped together. Okay. So now we've drilled, we're going to countersink. So we're going to take out that one bit, put in the snail cutter. There we are. And now we're just going to repeat what we've just done on all of those holes.
just so we've got a nice little countersink for those screw heads. Now what that'll do is it'll help stop splitting potentially and, and just get that screw nice and neat and tucked into the timber. There we all are, all done, back to the bench. Okay, so that's all of the, the straps made. What you may find is once you've drilled through, you've got a little bit of burring happening on the holes here. Now you can go back to the uh, countersink and countersink the backs as well, that sometimes helps. But just to be honest, a little bit of abrasive or, or a chisel on the backs just to flatten those holes off will just help those boards lie nice and flat when you're joining. So let's lay them out as they're going to appear. So we've got the main strap. Now I'm just keeping an eye on where we're going to cut our circle. Get them as central as possible. Second one is going to go on there. But we are going to bring the, the centre column up in a minute and just to get that nice and nice and accurate. These are going to go in there. Just to make everything snug and fit together. Okay, so that's where we've got to end up. Um, so we'll get some glue on now and get our pieces in position. I'm going to start with one strap. We'll then bring the centre column up and make sure everything's nice and aligned before we do the next one. So yeah, happy with that. So a little bit of glue. I've got, by the way, in terms of screws that we're joining together, I'm using the Woodsboro screws here. These are 4x30 uh, mils. Um, so they're going to go through enough, and I don't want them to go through too far, remember. We've got a countersink there. I don't want to come through the top of the, um, the table. Um, these aren't stainless. They're not designed to, to stay outside. So bear that in mind. You can use stainless steels if this is going to stay out in all the weathers. This, I'm not going to keep this in the weathers. This is going to go under a, um, an actual roof uh, on the patio, so it's going to be covered from the worst of the rains. So you may need to consider that. You may need to consider your glue you're using as well. I'm using Type Bond Original. You might want to go for Type Bond 2 or 3 if you're going to go outside. So um, just bear those things in mind for the conditions that your table is going to be in. Um, use the fixings to suit. So a little bit of, little bit of glue. Get this first one positioned centrally as you can by eye. And I'm looking at these two areas really. There we go. So now we can bring our centre column up and I'm really roughly lining this up with the centre. I've marked the centre here. So we'll pop that in position. The ends have been cut on the chops all nice and square. So I've got everything where I want it to be. So let's pop our other side strap in position. We are also going to put a brace, a triangular brace up here as well, just to give that extra support. Because on its own, it's not going to be overly strong. Um, it just slot in. So glue on the back again.
just getting everything in position I can take these out once this is glued in they should be this I did measure them they should be the same as our centre column there we are now we can screw in this is just going to make it as tight as we physically can remember this is an old gate post it's not dead square but it's not too bad either you don't have to you can go and you can get new timber if you want to plane it up the reason I'm not doing that with this one is this has got lots of screws and nails and old things in it so before I turn I will sand the pummel so these areas but I'm not going to put anything through the planar thicknesser I don't want to be that person to scratch the uh, the thickness of bed While that is in position, let's glue in one of these. I want to leave that one, and we'll do that right at the end. Once we've done everything, once this is turned on final assembly, that will be put in position. Also, the, the triangular pieces to bolster everything up in terms of strength. So I'm going to put one more of these little side pockets in. Lovely. So now that can come out. We looked at later on. We've got all our pieces in there. We're going to go to the bandsaw now, cut this round, and then that can be set aside to, to dry while we start working on the base. Okay, so we're just going to cut this rough round out. We will sand this in a minute. So just keep into that, that line that we used the template on a minute ago. You can use a jigsaw if you wanted to, to do this. So, okay, these, these are the scraps that were left over from the rest of the project. We need to make the base, and the base is going to be a cross base with one long strap going through the middle, and then oh, on either side of that long strap, two smaller pieces. On those, we're also going to have a foot on each of the four um, uh, lengths, um, and then again, we'll have a, a, a shaped uh, center support. We'll explain it all as we go along. So we need to go to the table saw now, cut these to 150 mil I've set this out so 150 mil six inches okay I've set the table saw to six inches so we've got our scrap pieces here Lovely. Okay, so back now to the chop saw to cut to length. Okay, so this is going to be the long um, section of the, the main feet, or main foot, brace, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to trim the edge here, because at the moment that's not level, or not square, so trim the edge off. And then we're cutting these lengths to 55, because we're going to have feet protruding from them, so 55 mil, and so this is matching the top, if you think about it, the top is 55 diameter, but then the feet are going to bring it beyond the top, so it just makes it a little bit more stable. Okay. 
So there we are. So now we need, if you think about that as a cross brace, we need the other two pieces that are coming out here. Now they're going to be joined by a centre band as well. Um, so if we, if this is six inches or this is 150, that uh, that means that I need to go 200 either size to, to make up the, the final 550. Um, if my maths work out correctly. So let's go for another one of these scrap pieces, get rid of our waste. In fact, I'm going to go slightly longer so I can hold it easier in that chop saw. Let's go for a longer piece of timber. Just trim that edge first. Then I'll mark my 200. Now, whilst I'm here, I may as well um, cut the feet. The, the feet are going to be 100 long, 100 mil long. So we'll do the first one and then we'll cut everything to match. So, 100. In fact, let's go to the center of the board where I can actually get that blade down to make contact. I'll keep marking with the same piece of timber just because if there is any error it doesn't get transferred and made worse. Okay, so I think we can go back to the bench now. Okay, so these are our cut bits. Let me just show you where they're going to be positioned, just to give you a better understanding. So we have our main structure there. Then our feet are going to be just to elevate this off the floor, just to avoid or help to stop some of this rocking that you can get on unlevel patios and, and things like that, decking areas like that. Now, of course, at the moment, this is just floating, so we need a brace. So this is a bit I've cut separately now this is thinner in terms of this thickness here than these are so i don't want this touching the ground otherwise again we'll go back to rocking um so this is thinner um if you want a measurement let me just measure i have not set it to any specific measurement so that's 20 millimeters and all the other material for everything else has been 25 okay so that includes the tabletop that was 25 as well Okay, so that's our structure. So now everything, back to the drill. We've got to drill everything ready to be assembled. Um, and then we can flip it over and do the same that we've done with the top. Get that center column on and position everything. Okay, so let's do the feet first. I'm just using the fence to get the position in the same place. I'm not too worried about spacing. It's just want it in the same place in terms of how far from the front or back. I never quite made it all the way through. Now I can just release the 
the back fence here, get that out of the way. Get the feet out of the way. Now just that centre strap, that centre support. I just positioned or roughly drew where I want these these holes. And then we're gonna put two here. Flip that around, I wasn't getting close enough then. That edge. That's it, then back to the countersink. sunk let's go back to the bench and start assembly okay so we're going to start assembly so my first job is to measure the halfway point so 55 mil so 275 I had to think about that for a minute 275 we'll put a square edge or square sorry across there halfway point on this one if it's one 150 is going to be 75. Same on this one. Seventy-five. That will then help us line those up. A little bit of glue. You can go a little bit, you, as I've already said, you can do a lot more to this. I've just kept everything square. You can shout for edges, make everything look pretty and router things if you want to. It's a really quick session though. Gives you the basic structure, which you can then expand on. So let's just secure those together. Put clamp on there if you want to. Get our screws again, same screws, 30 mil. That's our feet all in, well not our feet in position, but that's a cross brace in position. We now want to add our um, feet. So the way we're going to do that, I want to have these in the same position on every side, of course. So what I've done is just made myself just a little jig. We're going to have a 30 mil um, protrusion here. So where this overhangs the other piece. So if I pop that there, we will glue in a minute, of course. And then I can line that up with our, our pencil mark glue the back and screw through and just repeat that all the way around the piece though those feet will be in the same position every every time so a bit of glue on the back don't you remember not to glue everything because that's going to be exposed and overhanging so i'm going to glue this section only
We're going to go in there, back to our marks. Also just making sure it stays nice and level here. Get the first one in. We've got that one in, we can bring everything true. Get my hand in the way of the camera a minute. Just want to push that down. We are. So all we do now is repeat that around all four sides. There we are, so that's it. There's a little bit of splurge coming out with the glue so you can wipe that off. But then when you turn it over, you've got your feet coming out nicely. I've, in again, in the blog uh, version of this, I've painted the base and I painted the top with um, a shed paint. And I've oiled the, the center column because the center column in that one was an oak um, piece, so that was quite nice. You can do the same on these, you can completely paint them, you can uh, oil them, you can do whatever you want really, or just leave them natural, whatever. But that's ready now for our for our top to go on there. Now, if we just stand that like that, there's not gonna be enough strength, even if we screw from the back, which we will do later, um, but we need an extra support there. So this is where we're gonna do side brackets, almost like bookmarks, um, or the bookends, sorry. And so we'll have a nice um, a little OG shape on the outside of it. We can then screw those both to here and against the, the column once it's put in place and, and finally assembled. Can't do that today. We can make them today, but we can't assemble it today because this still has to be turned, don't forget. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do next. I've got some nice timber put aside for those. Um, and we're gonna, again, make a paper template to do these and we'll cut them on the bandsaw. So again, let's just pop that to one side. So there's our bit of timber. It's a pretty bit of timber, this one. Again, tulip. It's got this lovely dark streak running down through it. What I need to do is make sure we've got a 90 degree angle on our, um, our little upstands. So I'm going to cut on the chop saw with then mark. I'll cut another one with then mark and, and so on. So I just want to do a little OG. So this is, we'll make a paper template to do that. So a bit of cardboard box. There you are. That's so complicated I'm going to keep it You could just do a straight triangle if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I think what we'll do now, first of all, let's get to the um, bandsaw. Uh, sorry, to the chop saw. I'm going to cut a 90 degree on here. Then I can push this up to that side. We can do our first one. Um, and then I can start flipping over. Okay. So off to the chop saw just to cut that to size. But I'll meet you at the bandsaw. Okay, so there we've, we've marked them out. So I've got uh, two of the supports on each of these pieces of timber. So it's just time to cut out.
There we are, all four supports brackets made, back to the bench. So that's them cut out. Now you can go to the bobbin sander or hand sander, whatever you have, just, just sand that surface nice and clean. It will need it, there's a lot of end grain going on there. Um, but the other thing, we're going to drill and screw from the bottom into the bottom of these support brackets, but they're also going to need to be screwed onto the um, centre column as well. So I'm just going to drill a couple of holes here, um, or hole in each of the um, the supports, and then countersink them in ready in readiness for a decent long screw to go into there. Now the alternative to this here, because those screws will be visible, so you could drill um, and plug if you wanted to, just to do an, a plug to, to lose all sight of the screws. That's entirely up to you. But this is for speed, this is what I'm doing, so we're going to drill all the way through. This is going to be a decent sized screw to go into to here. I would probably say about a 60 mil. Countersunk, counter sinking is absolutely necessary because we're into end grain. Ever so easy to split this bracket. And then the countersink. So there we are, they're nicely drilled and countersunk, ready to go into the actual main centre column. So there we are, I hope you've enjoyed that everybody. Um, you would have seen us turn the centre column a couple of days ago on the Tuesday, um, but this is how to make the base in the top. Nothing's glued or screwed together yet, so that's for two days ago. Um, but that's the brackets. I've done a, a, the same thing for the top. So these are just triangular brackets that we're going to put on the top of the column to support um, the actual top, the tabletop itself. And of course, once we've got everything assembled, then I put my final block in here to sandwich that center column together um, and support everything. So enjoy this one. This is a real fun project, especially for the summertime, for the patios and for your, your, um, your garden spaces. Until next time, everybody, thank you very much. Don't forget, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, share us around, subscribe to our channel. Till next time, bye-bye.